Let's go through a common everyday example to explain some of these concepts surrounding linear kinematics. And so in this example, let's say we're simply going to bring a cup to our mouth. Now I'll ask you, in the beginning, before the cup moves, what's its initial velocity going to be? I hope you all said that the initial velocity was going to be zero. And then we're going to have the cup move over to the mouth. When the cup gets to the mouth, what's its final velocity going to be? And unless you're going to have some pretty expensive dental work, I hope you will also say that the velocity has to be zero. So we're going to move from our initial position P to our final position P prime. And again, our velocity is going to start with zero before we initiate movement of the cup. And then when the cup gets to our mouth, its final velocity is going to end up being zero. However, the velocity cannot be zero throughout the entire time. If the velocity were zero throughout the entire time, the cup wouldn't move. So this is what our position, velocity, and acceleration curves look like during this simple task. Let's break these down and let's look at them a little bit more closely. I really think it's easiest to start by looking at velocity. And again, note that the velocity starts with zero, the velocity ends with zero, but the velocity cannot be zero throughout the entire time. First, what we have to do is we have to speed up until we get to some peak, which in this case is about the middle of the movement. And then it has to slow down to return back to its final velocity being zero. So again, I hope you can see here that as the position moves from left to right, first we have to speed up. And whenever we're speeding up, the acceleration is going to be in the direction of travel. So our acceleration is also going to be going from left to right. We are going to reach our peak velocity somewhere in the middle, and then we have to start to slow down. If we're slowing down, we have to have an acceleration. That acceleration is slowing us down. And whenever an acceleration is going to slow us down, that acceleration has to be opposite of the direction of travel. In this case, going from right to left. So now let's compare our velocity and our acceleration curves. First note that we begin by speeding up. We're going to have a positive slope, so we're going to have a positive acceleration. Then we're going to reach a peak where we will have a zero acceleration, however briefly, and then we'll start to slow down. When we start to slow down, we're going to have a negative slope, and therefore we're going to have a negative acceleration. Now let's also see what those areas under the curves represent. First note that the area under the velocity time curve is going to represent the displacement. And since we are moving in a positive direction, we're going to end up having a positive displacement. Now let's take a look at the area under the acceleration curves. The areas under the acceleration curves are going to tell us something about the change in velocity. Now, during the first portion of the moving, we're speeding up. We're going in the positive direction. We're going to have a positive change in velocity. And so we have to have a positive area under the curve. During the second part of the movement, we are slowing down. We are going to have a negative acceleration. Now, if we look at the area under the positive curve and the area under the negative curve, those two areas have to cancel each other out if we are going to start with zero velocity and end with zero velocity. Because again, remember, it's the area under the curve that tells us the change in velocity. And if we're starting with zero velocity and we're ending with zero velocity, that means we have no overall change in velocity but the velocity is changing throughout the movement. And what that means is that the positive area and the negative area must cancel each other. They do not have to be symmetric, but they have to cancel each other in order for us to start with zero velocity and end with zero velocity. Now, why do these curves actually look the way they do? 
Let's look at three curves right here, a blue curve, a red curve, and a green curve. For now, don't worry about the numbers 3, 5, and 7. But what you'll note with the blue curve is that things are pretty straight. And then the curve, for lack of a better word, gets curvier as we go to red, and then the curviest curve is going to be green. Now again, this is our position versus time curves. Note that they all start at the same position, and they all end at the same position. Now let's take a look at the velocities. You'll note that the velocity for the blue curve, which was straightest for the position time curve, abruptly starts and abruptly ends. And we have a little bit of a flatter, more gradual start and end with red. And then finally with the green, we are going to have the most gradual start and end. And again, this is our velocity versus time curves. If we look at velocity versus position, something that will become important later on in the course, you'll see once again that they all start with the same velocity, which is zero, and end with the same velocity, which is also zero, at the same positions, in this case, zero and four meters. But because we have a more gradual start and stop for the green curve, we are going to have to have a larger peak velocity in the center. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the acceleration curves. Again, the acceleration curve for blue in this point ends up being a straight line. We have a more abrupt start and stop with the red and a more gradual start and stop with the green. Now, why is this important? Well, let's go ahead and let's take a look at jerk. One hypothesis, the minimum jerk hypothesis, states that for most human movements, we want to try and minimize jerk, particularly around the endpoints. And you'll note that we have relatively high amounts of jerk for both the blue and the red curves. But the green curve actually starts and ends with zero jerk. And that's probably something that we want to see when we're having a movement. We don't want to have a very abrupt start and stop but we want to have a smooth start and stop, which would dictate that we minimize our jerk at the start and the stop. So that was a simple example that we had of just looking at bringing our cup to our mouth. However, there are so many different movements that will start and end with zero velocity that I hope you'll become very familiar with these curves.